Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a very smart file save macro in Microsoft Excel. This macro is going to save a file using the contents of cell A1 if that is available, but you're also going to be given the choice of changing that file name if you want to and also the location. So let's have a look and see how we're going to do that. I'm clicking on the developer tab and clicking Visual Basic. If you don't know how to make the developer tab visible, check this video. It's going to tell you how to do it. I'm also locating and clicking on my personal macro workbook and clicking on module one, which at the moment is empty. If you don't have a personal macro workbook, this video is going to tell you how to create it. So here is the code of our macro. I'm going to give it to you as a download so you can get hold of it yourself. I'm going to copy it here and paste it into the dialog. I'm going to run through it so you know what changes to make to it potentially. Firstly, we're going to declare our file name variable as a variant. That's a little unusual. Typically it would be string, but because there's a chance that this could end up having a value which is called false, a Boolean value, it needs to be declared as variant. Then we're going to declare a variable to hold the contents of cell A1. That's just going to be a string. We're going to declare a variable that we're going to put the file path in as well. Now we're going to get the contents of cell A1. So that's going to go into this variable that we just created. And we're going to preset a path that just allows you to specify a path that it's going to default to. You can change that. Let me show you how you're going to get your path. So I've got a location here that I may potentially want to use. So I'm just going to click in the address bar here and click copy and that would allow me to then paste it into here. I'm adding a trailing backslash but you can pre-populate this and that'll make it a lot easier particularly with later versions of Windows which tend to make saving files or later versions of Excel as well tend to make the location for saving files really difficult to get to. Next up we're going to actually get the contents of the variable file name. And what we're going to do to do that is we're going to show the user the save as dialog, but they're only going to see it and be able to work with it, but it's not actually going to do anything except allow us to trap what it is that they've asked for. So we're going to pre-populate it with a file name that is made up of the path here and also any value that was in cell A1 and it's going to have XLSX as its extension. It's got a filter here that is the Excel workbook filter, and it's also going to have a title here which says confirm or edit the file name and folder. That's a prompt to the user as to what they're supposed to do here. Now that dialogue's going to come up, they're going to be able to fill it in, then it's going to close, they're going to think that it's saved, but in actual fact that's not doing the saving. What we're going to do is firstly test to see if they cancel. So if they press the cancel button, even if they filled in the dialog, then they're going to get a warning to say that they didn't save their file. And this is the test. We're having a look at the file name variable and seeing what type it is. And if it's Boolean, true or false, then you're going to get this message. But if you click the save button, then everything's fine. And then this line of code actually does the saving. It uses active workbook dot save as and it puts into it the file name that we got up here and everything is saved at that point and you'll get a message box saying that it's saved. So let's look at two things here. Let's have a look firstly at this. This method get save as file name. And I'm going to give you the link to this because this is some interesting information about this particular method. This is its syntax. We're using Active Workbook here and here is the method. Now it takes potentially a number of parameters, all of which are optional. We're using most of them here. So you can see that we're using the initial file name and we're using the file filter and we're also using the title. There is no button text here because I'm working on a PC that's only available for Macintoshes. The other thing that is interesting here is that the return value is a variant. So we need to make sure that we have a variable that will take the return value. That's why file name was set up as a variant. 
And down here, the method is going to return false if the user cancels the dialog box. So I'm going to give you a link to this, just some interesting information. Let's go and see how it looks in practice. So let's see our workbook here. I'm clicked away from cell A1, so nothing relating to the current cell is going to impact this. Let's go and get our Visual Basic here. And I'm going to run it. So I'm going to click in the top and I'm going to press F8 so we can go through it step by step. We're getting the contents of cell A1 at this point. We're getting the path. Well, the path variable is being filled with whatever it is that I've put in here as my suggested path. Now we're about to launch the file save as dialog to get the user chosen file name and path. And here it is. So it's defaulting to what we asked for. I can change this quite easily. I can also change my file name if I want to. I've got plenty of ability to do things here. And I'm going to click Save. Now, it's skipping ahead, but in actual fact, it should have actually stepped through this a little bit better. And what it does is it actually does the save at this point, not at this point. Now, we can stop it here to see if it's going to behave a little bit smarter. So I'm just putting in a stop at this point. So let's see if that works a bit better. That It's going to be easier for you to see what's going on. So... Here, I'm going to select a different folder, but I'm going to leave the file name correct. Okay, so now it's going to stop. I'm going to click OK. And then it's doing this test. Did we cancel out of that dialog? No, we didn't, so it's going to skip that. Now it's going to save the file, and then it's going to tell us that it just saved the file. Okay, the other thing that we need to do here is to test and see what happens if we cancel out of the dialog. So I'm just going to run this with the run button. I'm going to cancel out at this point, And then we're getting, well, the stop message is still there. I need to take that out. But here is the you didn't save your file warning. So you're not going to get file save. So this is not going to run down here. What you're going to get is this because you press the cancel button and the dialog returned a Boolean value, the false value. So I'm just going to take out that message box. Let's also remove the contents of cell A1 and let's prove to ourselves that this macro is going to work even if cell A1 is empty. But let's also run it as you would run it typically. Let's go to view macros. Here is the macro. Now you could also obviously put it on a toolbar button. Let's run it. You can see that cell A1 was empty. So the file name is empty, but we're still being taken to the location where we are going to save our file or where we can start to navigate to where we're going to save our file. I'm just going to call this test, click save, and the file has been saved. Now, you can, before you go any further with this macro, is you could take out the file save message box. You don't actually need that. It might be overkill. You certainly don't want to take out this one, which warns that you didn't save your file because you really should be warning your user that they didn't save the file if they didn't save it. So there is a very handy macro in the description below. You'll find a link to download the code for the macro. I'll also give you the link to the Microsoft tool for understanding a bit more about this get save as file name method. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.